Okay, um, welcome back again. Um, we are going to do a lot of project work um, that counts for half of the course uh, points. I will now introduce a second part of the work that you have to do, which is writing an individual essay about digital technology, AI in particular, and especially the social impacts and the ethical issues related to that. Um, this will be only a uh, short introduction on uh, upcoming Wednesday. I will say a little bit more. This is just an introduction to the essay you have to write. So the question from our side is write an essay on digital technology, uh, social impact and ethics, but focus it on actually the use case that you have selected. So that depends on the group. And what we want you to do is think about the kind of solution you are developing for your use case, but think about what kind of impacts uh, on people, on communities it may have, and whether that is the good impact you want. And if there are side effects that are not so positive, then what can you do uh, about it? And that is a kind of reflection that you as a developer or designer or policy maker uh, have to. We want you to put that uh, on paper. In the, uh, in the syllabus and on Canvas, you You find a, a full description. Um, the essay should not be very long. That's uh, not possible. That is also um, not the idea. So we think a few pages, three to five. Uh, this is not a golden rule, but uh, set in not a set in stone. But it gives you the idea of what you have to do. Uh, about relevant issues related to society and ethics focused on your own group work. Then uh, there is a lot of literature related to this topic. Um, it, I have been studying it. It's really a lot. It's, uh, it's very hot. It's very new. It's only now that artificial intelligence has made some kind of breakthrough out of the academic lab into society. Um, so this literature uh, is vast, uh, very recent, but also all over the place. So it can be pretty overwhelming. But the point is that you focus on issues and discuss them uh, in relation to your own use case. Uh, some of the questions you might ask yourself, we have put, uh, uh, you find them from A to uh, A, B, C, D here with the bullets in the syllabus. But this is just guidance. So this is not what you have to do, but you, uh, this is a way to help you think about it. But if in your use case, there are other more important things then just choose that. Um, this essay work, individual essay work is also starting today. So you will have a lot of work in front of you. For this essay, this is probably a field you are not very familiar with. Actually, we are also pretty new to this specific uh, stuff on ethics. 
So the question is, how do you familiarize yourself with a field that is new to you? And uh, here uh, I have some recommendations. There is a uh, very interesting talk on video on AI and ethics, on a kind of overview talk by Professor Ricardo Baeza Yates. He is a uh, well known scientist in this field. He works now at uh, Northeastern University in, uh, in the United States. Um, <clears throat> He's also well known in his work for web science. He has been uh, the head of the Yahoo uh, research uh, labs. Um, we will put up uh, the link to the uh, lecture. That's uh, about one hour. This is the quickest way to get a very over quick overview of issues on AI and ethics. And uh, this talk is in the context of an initiative that we are also involved in called Digital Humanism. And what they do is they have a set of lectures on hot topics in uh, ICT and uh, the digital uh, society, and this is one of them. So the quick way into this is just to uh, look at this um, lecture. And please do this today or tomorrow before uh, we will go into more depth on Wednesday into the various issues. Then the second step, if you have a, a little bit of time over, um, then uh, it's good to read some uh, scientific articles across the topic. Uh, the literature is fast and also not very well organized. But we will put up in Canvas uh, some links to relatively short articles that are pretty representative for the discussion that people, uh, <clears throat> people are having these days. So uh, this is all, uh, and I made a list here, but I will make them available. They are not very long uh, articles, typically 10 pages. So that is doable. Uh, it's uh, there are very big reports, uh, very big books. But if you want to have a quick intro, then reading a set of short articles that are representative for the discussion is the best way. But that is if uh, the give the priority to look at the digital humanism uh, talk. Then, um, you have to read quite a lot in a short time. Um, that might not be easy for everyone. So I have to end this uh, a little bit of advice how you do that. Um, <clears throat> in science and scientific education, um, People are educated to be careful and detailed, um, uh, not to forget anything. But here you do it uh, the other way around. If it's just for the purpose of orienting yourself on a new field, then don't do detail or close reading because that's way too slow. What you do is how you often read uh, newspapers, you scan the headlines to get an idea of what they try to tell you. Sometimes that is also called diagonal reading. And you might compare it with um, zapping on television. Uh, so you jump a little bit around in order to get a feel for what is interesting. So you do not read, even for short articles, everything, but look at the title, look at the abstract of a scientific article, because an abstract is the, uh, the thing that uh, authors write in order to get a key message uh, to you. The introduction is where they state uh, what their problem is, what they are looking at and the conclusion. So you only read, focus on certain parts of the article. 
And then you ask yourself two questions, and that's basically what you also what you do when you analyze an interview. Um, in scientific literature, people introduce uses uh, terms and concepts that are apparently important. Uh, terms that are stressed, concepts that are mentioned uh, very often. So you ask yourself, what are the key concepts in such an article? And the second question you ask yourself is basically, what are they trying to tell us? What is the key message or idea? It's, uh, some articles are very clear in that, but some articles have a lot of words and are academically complicated. So the idea is that you read beyond the article, behind the words, what are they trying try to tell us? And in a sense, if you have several articles, you do the same, and then you look for patterns or common concepts or common themes across these articles. So that's the way to make some kind of uh, helicopter uh, summary. What are they trying to tell you? So that's a kind of advice. So read quickly, uh, look at the headlines, the key concepts, uh, the key idea behind it. That's the kind of advice I could have. And then uh, we stop here because the most important thing is that you uh, get your uh, projects and use cases uh, for properly formed. So on Wednesday, I will go a little bit uh, more into the hot AI issues related to social impact and ethics. One of them that you will find uh, in Ricardo's uh, invited talk, but also in the articles that I will uh, upload, is the concept of bias that uh, in data analytics, uh, you put data in, you do something with it and you get something out. And then the experience is that sometimes it has a very uh, weird results. So the one of the big, uh, that's called bias, uh, some kind of distorted view on reality. And there are very strong uh, examples of it. But uh, just for fun, I took some of our own examples. So, uh, we here, uh, sitting in the Netherlands, we say when we start uh, this lecture, good morning, although we damn well know that it's uh, good afternoon in Malaysia. And I heard several times in uh, our AI webinar, okay, now we have a half an hour lunch break, but um, in Ghana, it's still uh, coffee time in the morning, and uh, in Malaysia, it's more dinner time. So that's an example. <laughs> Pretty harmless, but there you already see uh, a point of bias. And uh, I made three photos. Um, this is also, uh, this is basically a cl cliche type of idea of at the left, the Netherlands. In the middle, Malaysia, in particular Sarawak, and at the right hand side, the landscape of the Sahel. And here you see, um, although you cannot say that this is totally wrong, and these are actual photographs, but they are not representative, for example, not for Holland. So there are places like this, but most places are not like that. So that is also, uh, also with uh, photographs, you can convey a picture that is actually biased. And that is also a big issue in AI and digital technology. And uh, below, I have given some photos of interview type situations. And also there, you see a specific setting. For example, the left-hand side is a uh, typically what teach in uh, science uh, doing an interview and um, uh, you see a specific setup where it is clear that the female is the 
interviewer and uh, the man is the the one the expert or the specialist to be interviewed so that's where you also see that in pictures you can convey a lot of in this case uh, gender bias okay but that's we will get into that on uh, wednesday um, please uh, look at the uh, overview lecture uh, talk about this further on Wednesday. Anna, Anna, the floor is yours. Stop, stop, stop sharing. Stop sharing. <laughs>